In this video, we're going to look at the quicksort. The quicksort is a sorting algorithm that allows us to put data sets in order. An example might be putting names in alphabetical order. It might be putting numbers in ascending order. As the name suggests, it's fairly quick to implement, and as we'll see, it's fairly easy to use. The data sets we're going to be dealing with are going to be small. What we need to appreciate, though, is that a computer would deal with a much larger data set. So when we look at one of our data sets, you might say, well, I could just put that in order from observation. The idea is that we carry out or implement the algorithm right the way through to show the examiner we know how it's working. You'll get no marks for just writing the list in the correct order. So let's have a look at implementing the quicksort. We're asked to sort the following numbers in ascending order. So ascending, we're going from smallest to largest. Descending, we would go from largest to smallest. So we've got 3, 2, 10, 6, 8, 5, 12, and 7. I'm going to write these now across the page. So we've got 3, we've got 2, we've got 10, we've got 6, we've got 8, we've got 5, we've got 12, and we've got 7. What we need to do is start with a pivot. We're going to divide this data set into two sublists. If we have now an odd number in our data set, we simply go for the middle number to be our pivot. If we have an even number, so in this particular one we've got 8, we locate the middle and move 1 to the right. So in this particular case, what we would do now is take 8 to be our pivot. I'm showing this now as our pivot with a circle. I like to think of the circle as the value we're going to consider. So what we want to do is put this in ascending order. I'm going to write out all of the numbers that are smaller than 8 in the order that they appear to the left of the 8. So 3 is smaller than 8, 2 is smaller than 8, 6 is smaller than 8, 5 is smaller than 8, 7 is smaller than 8, and now we find 8 in its place. To the right, I'm going to look at all the numbers that are greater than 8 in the order that they appear and that's going to be 10 and 12. We can now lock this in place, and we lock this in place, and we show that now with the square or a box. So 8 is in the correct place in the list. What we now have are two sublists. We have all the numbers that are less than 8 and all the numbers that are greater than 8. There are lots of different ways people show this. I prefer to keep going and just lock these in as we go. So consider lock. I now need to consider a pivot in each of these sublists. So quite clearly the pivot in this sublist is going to be 6 as that's in the middle. So we will now consider 6. The pivot in this sublist is going to be 12. So all I'm doing is taking the middle one and moving to the right. So let's now look at this particular sublist here. We want this in ascending order. So, 3, 2, 5, 6, and 7. We've already got the 8, which we write. We're now going to consider this sublist. This is in order. We want it in ascending order. So, I now have my 10 and my 12. So, I can now lock two more values in place. I can lock the 6 in place. That is in the correct position. 8 was already locked in from the previous one, so again, my box is coming round. And then 12 can now be locked in place. As stated, some people show that this is going right to the end with an arrow and don't write it down each time. That is an alternative approach. So, what we're now going to do is consider the pivot in each of these sublists. So, this is my first sublist, this is my second, and this is my third. So, the first one, now the pivot will be the 2. Here, the pivot is going to be the 7, as it's the only value in the list. And then in this one, it's now going to be 10. So what we've got then is now our new values to consider. So we want this to be in ascending order. So what we're going to have then is 2, we're going to have 3, and we're going to have 5. 6 is already locked in place. 7 is not going to move. And that's going to get locked in place. 8 is going to get where it is, so already locked in place. 10 will and 12 will. 
So now we can go through this and lock these down. So two gets locked in place. So we can do that one. I'm only locking the ones in that I either considered in the last list or that were already locked in. Six is locked. Seven becomes locked in place. That is in the right place. Eight was already locked. And again, you might have had arrows taking this down to the bottom. We now know that 10 can be locked. We consider that and quite clearly it wasn't going to move. And then 12 is locked. So we now have this sublist just here. And we consider now the sublist of 3 and 5. We take the middle and move 1 to the right. So is this going to move? Or well, let's see what happens. 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 and 12. So we can now lock these down. 2 is already locked. We've considered 5 in the last one, so I can now lock that in place. So 5 is going to go there, like so, and all of the others now are locked. So using this particular method, and it certainly isn't the only method, we can see now everything we need to consider. At this stage, once I've locked all of these in place, there are a couple, a few different ways that you can finish this algorithm. You can make a note to state clearly now that this must be in order as we consider three to be a single pivot. I would prefer to simply now list this as a pivot for consideration and then quite clearly it's not going to move. And that means I don't have to write to the examiner what I'm doing. That's in place. That's in place. All of these are locked down. So we can simply now lock them all in place. Or you could write a concluding statement that these are now in order. The way I like to do it is finish off and lock them here. This is certainly not exclusive and you may prefer to do it slightly different. But this is one valid method of finishing the algorithm to show that these are all in place in ascending order. So 6, 7, 8 and then 12. Please, if your teacher is teaching you this... Don't just tell them that you can write that in order. It's one of the most infuriating things, as quite clearly we know we could do it. But again, we're working off an algorithm. We're following instructions. So we can say now, list complete. So list complete in ascending order. So in ascending, let's just write this A-S-C-N-D-I-N-G order. So that's the end of the algorithm. So end of quick sort. So that's our quick sort. So all we've done is simply now considered these, split them up into sub lists and then locked them in place. Let's have a go at another one. We're asked to sort the following letters in alphabetical, I think this should be alphabetical order, um, or alphabetically. So in alphabetical order. So let's write them across the uh, screen again. So we're going to have P, B, we're going to have G, H, we're going to have E, we're going to have R, we're going to have U, we're going to have M, we're going to have D, and we're going to have L. So we want these in alphabetical order. Um, it's not always, I mean, even we don't often put our alphabet in order. So just be careful with this, um, because often it's, it's quite straightforward to make a mistake. So how many have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So again, we've got an even uh, even lot of numbers here, or even data set. So what we'll do is locate the middle and go one to the right. So our pivot is going to start with R. So let's look at the sublists that we've got. We've got now R to be the pivot. So everything to the left of R must be before it in the alphabet. So what we're going to have, P becomes uh, comes before R, P is before R, B is before R, G is before R, H is before R, E is, U isn't, M is before R, D is before R, L is before R, then we have R, and then we have U. So we can now lock this in place. And I have to think about this when I'm doing it because, I, you know, when you think about your alphabet, it's if it's not in order, it's often, uh, well, I wouldn't say hard, it's just I often don't think about this. So let's look at this sublist right now. We've got a total of eight letters. So locate the middle, which is just here, and go one to the right. So what we're going to have then is E. This is going to be the pivot of our sublist, and E is up for consideration. 
Also, we have another sub list here, which is going to be quite nice and straightforward, as we've only got one value, which is going to be u. So let's now consider the sub list just here. We need to put this in alphabetical order. So we're going to have b, then we can see that it's going to be e. Okay, so we've got P, then we've got now E here, but we've also got D. So D is going to be come before it. So it's going to be B, D. Then we're going to have E. Then we consider now the others, the other side of it in order. So B, D, E. Then we're going to have P, we're going to have G, we're going to have H, H, sorry, we're going to have M, we're going to have L. We see that we've got the R, which is already locked down, and we're then going to lock down U. So hopefully that's made sense, and we can lock these now in place. So E is going to go just here. So that's now locked in place. We've got R that was already locked in place, and then we have U, which is now locked in place. So let's now look at the pivots for our sublists. We've got one sublist here and one sublist here. So D is going to be the pivot of the first sublist. There now, the letters that are lower in the alphabet than E. Our pivot here, because we got five, is going to be H. So let's put that in, and we will get that one just here. So let's consider what we've got. We've got now B and D. They're in order. So B and D. E is already uh, locked in place. We've got H here. So it's going to go G. It's going to go H. It's going to go P it's going to go M, and it's going to go L. R and U are already locked in. So let's put these in place. We considered D, now we can lock it in place. We already had E locked in place, so let's lock E just there. That was already done from before. We've now got H. We considered H, so H is now locked down. We had R, so let's put R from before, and we had U. So that's what we end up with. Okay, now let's look at our sublists. We've got three sublists. We've got B, quite clearly B is going to be the pivot there, which will be nice. G, we've got G just here, again, nice pivot to deal with. Then we've got P, M, L. So M is going to be the pivot of this sublist right here. So now if we consider just rewriting this, B is not going to move. D is already locked in, E is already locked in, we're now going to lock G in, H was locked from before. We now need to consider this uh, trio just here and put these in alphabetical order. So we're going to have L, M, P, R is already locked down, U is in place also. So let's go along, let's put that on B, so let's have B, we're going to have D, D is locked down as it was before. So the only change so far is B. E is going to be in lockdown, just there. G is now locked. So we consider G. So consider lock. H was already locked, so we just put that on. We considered M. M hasn't moved. Things around it have moved. But L, M, N, O, P. So that's in order. I'm still thinking about the letters of the alphabet and hoping I've got them in order. It'll look a bit useless if I haven't. Uh, and U was there. So at this stage, again, you could write to the examiner that this is in order because we know L, M, P are in order. I still like to consider them, and this is just one approach. Please don't feel that you have to use it. It's an option for you, and then you can show complete lockdown on the next row when you write this out. So let's do that. So we're going to have B, D, E, G, H, L, M, P, are you okay so all of these i'll just take my well it won't take my time because it's going to uh be slightly boring let's in fact let's start this and let's put them on let's just get these now and we can show that this is in the correct order as all of these are locked so you make the case of whether you do this last stage or you simply write to the examiner often articulating what you want to say to the examiner can be a bit of a hassle hence why this method is quite clearly shown that we're putting these in order because each and every one has been considered and locked in place so we can now just finish this off and again, in the exam, it's going to take you slightly less as you can just simply draw these rather than dragging everything into place. So now what we have, so that looks good. And we can say the end of the algorithm 
So we can say now uh, end of quick sort. So end of quick sort. End of quick sort. Data set. So data set in alphabetical. So alphabetical order. So all we've done is simply show now that this is in alphabetical order. B, D, E, G, H, L, M, P, R, U is, of course, in alphabetical order. So there we go. That is implementing a quick sort. Don't go ahead in the exam. You'll get marks at this stage to show what you, you know in terms of a pivot. You will show, this is what we call an iteration. We've got one iteration here. You'll be given marks for showing this stage to show that you're uh, considering sublists and then you will get marks as you go through. If you simply write this out in the order, you will get nothing. So there we go, the quick sort, which is a sorting algorithm we implement to put now a data set in order.